there are many different systems that exhibit chaotic nature, but today we'll be looking particularly at one, the Henon map. This map was introduced by Michael Henon in 1976. It's a simplified version of the Lorenz model. However, the Henon map is the simplest two-dimensional mapping that exhibits chaotic behavior. It can be used to interpret driven harmonic oscillators, but it's known best for its horseshoe shape at the point where it exhibits chaos, where alpha equals 1.4 and beta equals 0.3. However, before we dive into the Henon map, let us review some common principles. We'll start with chaos. How is it defined? Devaney's definition of chaos gives the following. Let V be a set G from V to V is said to be chaotic on V if one, G has sensitive dependence on initial conditions, and two, G is topologically transitive. In other words, not only does a set have to be very dependent on its initial conditions, with slight variations resulting in very different results, but it also has to fill the entire region that it's assigned, its entire universe. But the question is, how do we actually determine if a system is chaotic? Dr. James York showed that period three implies chaos. So, if you can prove that fixed periodic points exist, that implies that the system will become chaotic. Recently, a new test has been developed to determine chaos. It's a binary 0-1 test for chaos. Basically, for some value in a discrete dynamical system, you can determine translation variables P and Q in terms of N. These variables can then be used to find a mean square displacement, m. Now this value m is based on time. And if it's a bounded function in terms of time, then the system is regular or non-chaotic. However, if the system is determined to be linear and it is not bounded in time, then the system is chaotic. In other words, to simplify it, you have a slope or an asymptotic growth rate of the mean square displacement m. We'll call this k. Now, if k is close to zero, then the system is regular or non-chaotic. However, as the system approaches one, as that k value becomes closer and closer to one, the system becomes linear. The mean square displacement becomes linear and the result is a chaotic function. Now let's turn our attention to the Hinon map. This map is an iterative map. So what happens is with each iteration, a point is plotted and then the next iteration continues after that with each sequential point plotted. Over time, this forms a map. Now, as you can see, this map can take on many different outcomes, depending on what your alphas and betas are, and it also depends on what your initial conditions are. The result is a wide variety of iterative maps. Now, the fixed points of each iteration can actually be found. If we look at this Mathematica output, 
We can find a general form for each sequential fixed point in the iterations. For example, period one fixed point is shown as well as the period two and the period three. Now that's for general alpha and beta when they're still variables. However, we can also assign an alpha and beta that are fixed, and then these can be used to find the actual fixed points in the system. Let's look at the general Henon map. The common choice is, of course, 1.4 for alpha and 0.3 for beta, due to the fact that at this point, the Henon map is known to be chaotic. We can see that fixed points exist in period one, period two, and in period three. Because they exist in period three, this implies that the system is chaotic. We see that period three points exist, which, as we know from James York, means that the system is chaotic. So it's showing what we already know. But this isn't the only thing that shows that the Hino map is chaotic at this point. If you consider the Linapov exponents, where a positive exponent implies that the system is either unstable or is very sensitive to initial conditions, as chaotic mapping would be, we see that at this point, the exponent is 0 0.419222. This supports the fact that the Henan map is chaotic at this point. Let's look at the 0, 1 test for chaos for the Henan map at alpha equals 1.4 and beta equals 0.3. The result is clearly chaotic. Looking at the P versus Q graph, we clearly see that the result is not very normal. And this is confirmed when we take the log of M and we see that largely the result is linear. In fact, the slope is 0.89, very close to one. This indicates that at this point, again, confirming what we already know, the Henan map is in fact chaotic. Moving on to another topic, bifurcation. Bifurcation is the point in a dynamical system where the behavior changes. It's a point where often you see a split in the result. So, whereas at one point, the function may have been converging to an equilibrium point, it then may split into a period two point or some other result. Basically, it splits and then continues to split over and over and over again. And the result is what you see. The function over time diverges and bifurcates. Thus far, we've only looked at variations of the Henon map when alpha and beta are both positive. But what happens when they're not? What if we have an alpha and beta that are negative? Well, as you can see, some very interesting things start to happen. Now, when beta is less than negative one, 
there's nothing chaotic about the system. In all cases, it'll either diverge to infinity, depending on what your alpha and your x naught and y naught values are, or it will spiral into a single fixed point. However, it doesn't mean that there's not some really cool results. Some of these spirals are incredible, but it's not chaotic. So, we'll look at a different area. Specifically, we'll look at when beta equals negative one. This also results in some very interesting behavior. Once we get it into a range where the resulting iterations no longer diverge, we see that we get a circle. Granted, sometimes it's a variation of circles. In fact, there could be five or two or six, depending on what your initial conditions are and what your alpha is. And sometimes they're also distorted. They're not perfect circles. However, they are still circles, whether they're broken or continuous. In this case, there's a possibility of chaotic behavior within the circle. So we apply the 0-1 test in order to determine whether or not these circles are in fact chaotic or if it's just a long repetition of fixed points. Based on the 0-1 test for chaos, it appears that these circles are in fact repetitive. Thus, they're not chaotic. We can see this from the continuously very low values for the slopes, 0 0.0075, 0 0.0016, various very small slopes that are the result of the 0-1 test for chaos, which puts it very close to zero. So unfortunately, the results aren't chaotic, but that doesn't mean we can't appreciate the value of the results. It still is very interesting behavior and something that needs further study. However, in this case, it is not chaotic. The Hinan map has a wide variety of interesting characteristics. At certain points, it's chaotic, and in others, it's not. And due to its simplistic nature, it's easily accessible to a wide variety of people. It does serve as a very easy way to look at chaos and to show what does and does not provide the basis for chaotic nature. As you can see, as we've talked about, the negative values of alpha and beta while interesting, don't result in any chaotic nature. Thus far, the only chaotic nature in the Hanan map can be found specifically around the values of 1.4 for alpha and 0.3 for beta. But there's always room for further study, and more study of the Hanan map is something that, in the future, could unlock more interesting characteristics and continue the dive into chaos.